So hello everybody, I'm here with Dr. Larish and Dr. Rakuya. We're doing case reviews. This is an interesting case, I think. Interesting, unfortunately interesting. You never want to be an interesting patient, but this is what's going on. So this patient presented with uh, pain, back pain, and uh, erectile mass was discovered. And uh, she actually was seen in a major hospital where they got an MRI and they noticed that she had this lesion in her rectosymoid. Uh, it's pretty far away from the anal verge. This is the lesion, so yeah, we understand each other. And it has kind of a classic look, right, Joe? Yeah, it semi -lunar. does. Yeah, and it's uh, it's rather large. Yeah, you know? and you always they always have that semilunar appearance. These uh, yeah, because it becomes like a stellate thing, and then when you open it, the whole thing just you know opens up like a um, like a clamshell. Right. And then they're deeper than you think. Yeah, and and you can see that this is pretty deep. It doesn't go through the mucosa because we see rectal mucosa here on it, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. This is the rectal mucosa right here. We could clearly see the edge of it. And uh, so she went, this was in a cancer center, you know, because she initially thought she had, they had, they initially thought they had, she had cancer, but this is clearly endometriosis. You know, incidentally, she has some fibroids, but they're not part of what the story we're talking about. So one thing that we noticed when we looked at her MRI is this, this white line. Do you want to comment on it, uh, Dr. Larish? Yeah, so it's interesting. We never look at the report from a CAT scan or an MRI before we look at the images ourselves because we don't want to taint our uh, perspective and our idea of what's going on in the pelvis. In this case, we looked at this and we saw this big white line here. And this white line is very clearly uh, a severe hydroureter nephrosis. This is the ureter that's about 12 times the size of what it's supposed to be. By the way, no mention of this in the report, which is why, again, you know, we don't really look at it. And what's, what's uh, interesting here is that there's a very clear transition right here, right where this mass is puckered in, that's where the ureter stops. So this is uh, stage four. And, and this is the beginning of the bladder because you can see the bladder starting here, yeah. the white part. Mm -hmm. And you can see there's no communication between the ureter, which is here, and the bladder. And you can see how stuff is kind of like pulled in. So it's a typical complete obstruction of the ureter, right? Do you want to show like this? Do you want to show this image, Yanni? I think this is a good one also to show. It shows it even better. So this yeah. is the patient standing up straight ahead as if they're looking in a mirror. Uh, and you can see this is the ureter here. And there's a very clear transition point right there, right at that point, where there's no ureter seen below, the bladder seen beyond that, and there's just no communication between the two. So whenever we see a patient like this, the first question we have is, is there a way for us to salvage this kidney? And the way that we make that determination is really based on whether or not this kidney has function. And so the first test is something called a nuclear medicine renal scan, which assesses how much of the function of the kidneys is each kidney taking care of. Normally it's 50-50, right? You have a right kidney and a left kidney, each one does 50% of the heavy lifting. In this case, 100% of the heavy lifting is being done by the right kidney. The left kidney is, is doing nothing. And so the next question is, well, is that because the kidney is just so high grade obstructed and the kidney is taking a break from work or is the kidney dead? Uh, so for that, we do a CT scan. And if we look at the CAT scan, uh, we can see here, this is the right kidney is a very thick, normal parenchyma. That's the meat of the kidney where all the filtration of the blood takes place and where the urine is made. And on the left side, uh, there's really no renal parenchyma. That, that light gray line is what's left of the kidney. The rest is just a big sack of uh, urine and pus that's left over. So this is a tragic consequence of uh, long-standing obstruction of the kidney. And by long-standing, we mean a few months. We're not talking about years. Um, to me, this is just a tragic, tragic story of kidney loss that could have been averted if we would have met the patient earlier. Unfortunately, this scenario, uh, short of removing the endometriosis and removing that kidney, we really don't have too many therapeutic options. But the patient will feel much better once this is out. So you want to hold this so I can talk for a second? Mm -hmm. So yeah, thank you, Yaniv. Clearly, we see so many of these. We saw, I, there's another patient that we have who has a similar problem. Luckily, she's not at this level yet, but these things happen. And the thing about these kidneys, losing the kidneys, that's very, it's silent mostly. 
people have back pain, they have symptoms, but it's not that acute and often the lab work is normal. So the only way to know is really to investigate with imaging. Mm -hmm. uh, so Joe, the goal is gonna be for the rectal lesion, we're gonna go ahead and uh, possibly a, a segmental resection. Possibly, but it's interesting because you do see the mucosa, but it is large and um, I, I would bet that we were gonna do a, a, a resection. Yeah, I think the, the good thing about this lesion, I think, you know, if there's, you know, something good to say about it, is that I feel that it is uh, kind of high. Uh, you can see that it's, where is it here we go? Yeah, it's up here and the anal verge is like down here at this level. So, you know, you got a ni nice 12, mucose. 15 centimeters, you and know. And the mucosa is intact. Yeah, I mean, so there may be some other, there's some other bowel, you know, adhesion and stuff like that, but the big, big lesion is up there. So we may be able to, even if there is a re anastomosis, it's going to be pretty high. It's high, so, and yeah. it's safer in that way. Right. Yeah. So, anyway, this is what we do. We review our cases, like, as a team. Any comment, uh, Yaniv? No, I think uh, we can do a good job for this woman. Hopefully, you know, it won't take more than a few hours, which is nice, and the patient can go home the next day. And this is why endometriosis is a multidisciplinary disease. Yep, and unfortunately, we've seen, you know, too many of these cases like this. Losing a kidney is, is a horrible thing in a young woman. Yeah, but ultimately she'll be okay, we think. All right.